Hello friends, I am Dr. Prashant Sharma and you are watching Medicos Hub 2. This is my first lecture on skeletal muscle relaxants and I am going to discuss the outline of classification of skeletal muscle relaxants. Skeletal muscle relaxants are basically classified into two major categories. First one is peripherally acting muscle relaxants another category is centrally acting muscle relaxants we know that the highest center for start of a motor neuron is cortex cortex to brain stem brain stem to spinal cord and finally a motor neuron that is ventral motor neuron arises from the spinal cord and form a neuromuscular junction with the sarcolemma so this is a ventral motor neuron and this is the terminal part and this is synaptic cleft this is neuromuscular junction sarcolemma this is muscle fiber this is the plasma membrane that is sarcolemma so this whole complex is neuromuscular junction now what is the mechanism of blockage by peripherally acting muscle relaxants peripherally acting muscle relaxants in involve neuromuscular blocking agents it is again divided into two categories non depolarizing blockers and depolarizing blockers the non depolarizing blockers bind to the acetylcholine binding sites of acetylcholine receptor but will not result in opening of sodium channel so final result is that membrane will not be depolarized or the muscle and plate remains non depolarized that's why these blockers are known as non depolarizing blockers these are also known as competitive blockers now another category of neuromuscular blocking agents are the depolarizing blockers bind to the acetylcholine binding sites of the acetylcholine receptor just like acetylcholine an important thing is that these also result in opening of the sodium channel and result in depolarization of the muscle and plate so these are depolarizing blockers another category of peripherally acting uh, muscle relaxants is of directly acting agents directly acting agents basically result in blocking of some receptors or uh, some protein molecules present on the sarcoplasmic reticulum or the t tubules finally result in uncoupling of the muscle contraction with the depolarization of the membrane so these directly acting agents and the neuromuscular blocking agents both are collectively termed peripherally acting muscle relaxants now we'll compare the peripherally acting muscle relaxants with centrally acting muscle relaxants what is the site site for action of peripherally acting muscle relaxants is either neuromuscular junction or in the muscle fiber here the site is cerebro spinal axis mainly brain stem 
एंड स्पाइनल कॉर्ड वॉट इज द मैकेनिज्म मैकेनिज्म इज दैट आइदर दिस विल ब्लॉक न्यूरोमस्क्यूलर ट्रांसमिशन और दिस में अनकपल द मसल कॉन्ट्रैक्शन फ्रॉम मेम्ब्रेन डीपोलराइजेशन दैट इज मेम्ब्रेन डीपोलराइजेशन विल अकर बट इट विल नॉट रिजल्ट इन मसल कॉन्ट्रैक्शन हियर द मैकेनिज्म इन्वॉल्व आइदर इनिबिशन ऑफ रिलीज ऑफ एक्साइटेटरी न्यूरो ट्रांसमीटर्स और स्टिमुलेशन ऑफ रिलीज ऑफ इनिबिटरी न्यूरो ट्रांसमीटर्स नो वॉट इज द रिजल्ट result is muscle paralysis here the result is decreased muscle tone no effect on cns some sedation is there that is some level of cns depression is there now these drugs are usually given iv these are usually given orally sometimes parenterally voluntary movements are lost voluntary power is not affected finally what is the proper use or the conditions in which the peripherally acting muscle relaxants are used these are used in short duration procedures like surgeries here these drugs or muscle relaxants are used in acute spasms chronic spastic conditions and conditions like tetanus so these are the various points of comparison between the peripherally acting muscle relaxants and the centrally acting muscle relaxants in next videos we'll discuss about the neuromuscular blocking agents which will include non depolarizing and depolarizing type blockers directly acting muscle relaxants and the centrally acting muscle relaxants hit the like button share and subscribe our channel to get the latest updates and notifications